What's up? This is Riley Knight here with TCGplayer.com and today we are going to be smashing more mirrors than a magpie with a stone beak. I tell you that much because it is time to get across the ways to succeed in the mirror matches of standard. Now look, you are probably a very powerful sorcerer indeed, probably a, a person of great taste and refinement I would imagine, and for that reason you may already have your tier 1 standard deck sh sleeved up and shuffled and ready to go. And you know that you're going to come across people who are on the same strategy as you. Whether it's ramming up red, whether it's energy, or an Azcanter control deck, or even the new kid on the block in Anointed Procession. Sooner or later, if you're playing one of these decks, you are going to come up against an opponent who is doing the same. You need to know how to beat them. You need to know which cards are key in those matchups. And we are going to get into it right here, right now and talk about how to break mirrors in standard. As the backbone of this season's blue control decks, Search for Azkanta is of course a key card in any control mirror. Landing and flipping a search will increase your win percentage immeasurably. So, how do we combat this? Well, approach players are in luck with access to cards like Fragmentize and Demystify. Get that out of here, they say. But, black mages aren't so lucky when it comes to removing enchantments. However, they aren't without their own heat. Duress, of course, is a sideboard all-star against control, and Argyll's Bloodfast can keep the cards flowing. However, no matter your colour preference, there's no reason to run any less than the full four negates in your 75 today. It is one of the best sideboard cards in the format, and it shines brighter in the mirror than anywhere else. A final highlight for White Wizards, if you're looking to resolve that second approach, why not strap yourself into the hope of Girapur? Dylan Daniels did well with his spicy slice of pepperoni. Silence your opponent, cast that approach, and it's GG, mate. Token decks are here to stay. This new kid on the block has had a bunch of hits already. Between Anointed Procession and Hidden Stockpile, however, it's quite vulnerable to enchantment removal. So make sure you've got your copies of Demystify and Fragmentize and... Because Anointed Procession decks rely so heavily on a 4 mana sorcery speed enchantment that doesn't immediately impact the board, a card like Lost Legacy is a great way to combat the combo-esque nature of the deck. Some of the most obscene board states have emerged from the Procession mirrors already, with life totals often reaching those triple digits. And as a result, a card like Argul's Bloodfast is a great way to keep you drawing your mighty 1-1s for 1 as the games continue. But what about when both players are at a million billion squillion life and you're going to deck first? Well, I'm pretty hot on a sideboard singleton approach of the second sun as a non-interactive way to beat an opponent with a Googleplex of life. Alternatively, you could, of course, go very deep on Revel in Riches. Ramin Red decks have been around forever and a day. We all know this, but the fact that the deck hasn't changed all that much since rotation means that we've got excellent data to use from months and months of tournaments. For example, Pro Tour Hour of Devastation, because there, in the top eight, PV navigated the turgid waters of some pretty tricky red mirrors on his way to claiming the title. And in doing so, he leant heavily on some hard hitting sideboard cards. Chandra's Defeat is the best answer to the way that Ramunap Red decks look to go bigger post-board. It's a one-mana Terminate, and it wrecks everything from Soul Scar Mage to Chandra T.O.D. But, as PV showed us, the real MVP is, of course, Aethersphere Harvester. An unanswered Harvester will eventually result in at least a 12-point life swing, which should be enough to put the game away, assuming you don't accidentally target yourself with a lightning strike or something like that. But you do have to be careful of opposing a braid. It's a clean answer to the 3-5, and it can ruin your day in no short order. Energy strategies of different stripes have run roughshod over standard for months. Most recently, of course, helping Huey Jensen crush the world championship in Boston. The PGO came ready with an insanely well-tuned list. They had Essence Scatter and Confiscation Coup in the main, and you can tell these boys were ready to face the mirror. And if you had hair like Reed, you'd be looking in mirrors all day long, so you can't blame them there. But Breaking through board stalls is the biggest challenge faced in the energy mirror. It used to be Ronus the Indomitable that uh, got us there, but 
It uh, looks like he's proven to be pretty dominable after all, really. So a delightful piece of new technology is instead River's Rebuke. It clears the way for the big alpha strike on turn 300 or whatever and makes sure that your enormous monsters can finally connect. And additionally, it's great to see the Herald of Secret Stream synergize with Sultai Energy's Vergerous Gear Hulks to punch through damage. Beating opposing energy decks is all about dominating the board, but... When it stalls out, cards like these will help you push through for the W. That's all she wrote today, sports fans. That is a tour of the ways to get ahead in the mirror matches of Standard. But as ever, I want to hear your thoughts. What are the ways that you are getting your edge when facing off against similar 75s? Let me know. You can always find me on Twitter at Riley Tower, or just down there in the comments. You'll find me as well. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'll see you next time.